Hidden for centuries in a private library may be the most important forgotten work of prophecy in history. On its pages are mysterious drawings that seem to prophesy terrorist attacks, war, doom. But who is the author of this book? Some prophet now lost to history? The great seer Nostradamus himself? Or his forgotten child? We must solve this mystery before it's too late to heed the apocalyptic warnings. Will these clues identify the author? For thousands of years, prophets around the world have predicted the end of days. More than one suggests the apocalypse is fast approaching. We call this theoretical convergence between doomsday prophecies and today's events the Nostradamus effect. Michel de Nostradamus. Nostradamus may be history's most celebrated prophet, but was he the only mystic to bear that name? Could this seer's son have inherited his father's visionary gifts? The mystery deepens in the wake of this recently rediscovered book, unearthed after centuries at the Italian National Library in Rome in 1994. The book is filled with bizarre imagery and shocking symbolism, unlike anything the elder Nostradamus ever published. Legend links it to his son. According to many, the book is a coded message specifying when a final cataclysm will destroy our world. What's more, they believe that this decisive moment is now upon us. There are all kinds of prophecies that tie us into right now as a period of apocalyptic events. But the prophecy is only legitimate if the author of the book is really a prophet. We will examine why some prophecy experts believe this puzzling book of images holds the secret to our moment of doom. The key to its predictive power may lie in unraveling the mystery of the book's authorship. The manuscript has long been assumed to be the work of history's notorious seer, Nostradamus. But many scholars now question that assumption. Could the author be his eldest son, Caesar? Perhaps his secretary? A prophet lost to history? Or a deliberate fraud? And does it echo the prophecies of other earlier cultures? We will neither refute nor endorse these theories merely present the evidence. Cesar Nostradamus, Nostradamus's eldest son, may have struggled his entire life in the shadow of his more famous father. Most of what the world once knew about Cesar has faded away in the nearly 400 years since his death. But did he ever suggest that he was also a prophet and that prophecy was the family business? The most controversial clue in the mystery that is Caesar is an ancient manuscript in Rome. The lost manuscript is entitled Nostradamus Vaticinia Code, or The Prophecies of Nostradamus. Since the title bears the renowned prophet's name, many believe he must be the author. But no record exists of Nostradamus ever publishing such a book. Therefore, the identity of its creator remains an open question. For some, if the author is a reputable source of prophecy, the future is clear. They believe it adds to evidence that doomsday prophecies and current events are converging. The lost book contains 80 mystifying watercolors. Researchers who have studied the drawings believe that seven of these images may contain the secret date of humanity's doom. The complete series of seven images can be considered a timing device to allow you to actually time the apocalypse. Most of those symbols are astronomical. The first of the seven images indicate the sun rising in Leo. 
during the same time period that the winter solstice falls on the center of the galaxy between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Now, this has only happened in the last few years, say, the last decade since 1999. So clearly the introduction of this whole sequence is pointing to the time we're in at the moment. Is it possible that the beginning of the end is upon us? Do these seven cryptic images from the lost book specify a precise time when the apocalypse will strike? Who wrote this book? A note within the book provides a clue. It suggests that toward the twilight of his life, Cesar, the eldest son of Nostradamus, delivered the book to Cardinal Mofeo Barberini in 1629. Did the Cardinal deem the book's supposed doomsday imagery too alarming for the common man to know? Did he have the book stored in a secret Vatican archive? The church is known quite a bit for having done that in its history. Anything that it doesn't want to get out to the public, they had complete control and complete power over. Probably had languished somewhere in a monastery. At one point, according to the notations on it, it was in the Vatican Library. But curiously, we find no trace of it listed in the Vatican Library. The cryptic book gathered dust for centuries before it resurfaced briefly in the 1920s and again in 1994. For those seeking to unlock its secrets, the key lies in answering one crucial question. Who created it? Is the author the elder Nostradamus, as the manuscript's text would have us believe? Nostradamus established his reputation as a prophet in southern France in the mid-16th century. To receive the visions he wrote, he would enter a trance-like state during which images of the future could be seen in a vessel of water. This ancient practice is known as scrying. Did Nostradamus depart from his standard means of expression, the written word, and draw the prophecies he saw in their raw visual form? Many Nostradamus scholars believe they see his prophetic signature in the images of the lost book. They assert that one of the most striking examples is the 46th of the 80 illustrations, a burning tower. I would say image 46 is a direct reference to the tragic events of 9-11. To me, that's almost like uh, somebody standing over New York City because we see the big, huge flame above the castle. In this case, we have not one, but two castles burn. Could Nostradamus have recorded his prediction of 9-11 not only in the image from the lost book, but also in one of his quatrains or prophetic writings? At 45 degrees, the sky will burn, fire to approach the great new city. In an instant, a great scattered flame will leap up when one will want to demand proof of the Normans. Many believe the great new city at 45 degrees refers to New York, which lies near 41 degrees latitude. Believers see evidence of the quatrain's accuracy in Nostradamus' reference to the Normans. Now, Normans is code for French. What happened on 911? The day before, French intelligence had all this traffic talking about an imminent attack either of the U.S. Embassy in Paris or domestically in America. The very morning the Pentagon was trying to figure out this new intelligence was the morning that one of the three jets crashed into the Pentagon while the other two hit the great new city's twin towers. Are the quatrain and image of the burning tower accurate predictions of 9-11? If they are, it lends credence to the authenticity of prophecy written by Nostradamus, as well as those pictured in the lost book. But here is a strange twist. There are no indications in the entire life of Nostradamus that he could draw. We have no evidence that Nostradamus was interested in art in any form. 
and given the extremely bad state of his handwriting and his ability to draw even simple images such as astrological or alchemical figures, we could be pretty secure in saying that Nostradamus had nothing to do with drawing or creating the images in the so-called lost book. In fact, toward the end of his life in the 1560s, Nostradamus could barely write. Plagued by arthritis, he relied on a secretary, Jean-Emmy Chavigny, who transcribed his prophecies. If Nostradamus was physically incapable of creating the lost book's sketches, who drew them? What clues can be found within the brushstrokes of the images? The drawings are very amateurish. They're very childlike. They're very loose. They're ink contour drawings, outlines, uh, that have been filled in with probably watercolor. Is it possible that a child drew these exotic images? Cesar, Nostradamus' son, was 11 years old at the time his father died. Could he have crafted these illustrations at the direction of the ailing prophet? Some believe it is unlikely that Nostradamus would expose his young son to the dark world of apocalyptic prophecy. The theurgic incantations that Nostradamus did is not something you teach Mickey Mouse and the Sorcerer's Apprentice. It's really heavy-duty stuff and you've got to be an adult. Evidence suggests Nostradamus deemed the gift of prophecy a curse, a horrifying glimpse of death and destruction from which he wanted to spare his son. For some, this raises the possibility that Caesar could have produced the book as his own work of prophecy. Is it possible that Caesar witnessed his father agonizing during one of his trance-like states? Was Caesar inclined to follow in his father's footsteps? There are many people that are known to us because they are shadows in the light of, of a genius or a controversial figure. And Caesar, I think on some level, he tried to stake out his own legacy. What did young Caesar see? Merely water or an apocalyptic nightmare as depicted in the lost book? And what other seemingly prophetic images does the book offer as proof that it is an authentic book of prophecy? Did the son of Nostradamus draw the images that some believe forecast our imminent doom? Encoded in this centuries-old manuscript are cryptic drawings. They may contain the darkest of all secrets, a prophecy suggesting when the world will end. In this book of 80 enigmatic images said to foretell our doom, do these seven form a code specifying the time of the apocalypse? The code that spells out the time period was much more important in these seven images than lurid images of demons and devils and destruction. It was more important to the people who created this collection to pass on the tradition of when this disaster was coming than it was to show graphic details of the disaster. Researchers suggest the first of the seven illustrations pinpoints an astronomical alignment that coincides with the first decade of our 21st century. And the third warns the apocalypse may be imminent. The world tree is being attacked or threatened by what looks like a club, perhaps something carved from a tree, that's off kilter, off axis. And this gives us the idea that we're in a dangerous time, we're, we're approaching that knowledge of good and evil, that moment that's a decision point. But most would agree that this manuscript contains value only if a reputable prophet created it. For years, many believed that the author was the most renowned seer of all, Nostradamus. But some scholars have reassessed the evidence and suggest that we reconsider this conclusion. Who actually created this book that portends Armageddon? Was it father or son? Solving this riddle may bring us closer to unraveling the book's coded warnings. And that may help determine whether the convergence of doomsday prophecy with current events is fact or folly. 
Few now believe the senior Nostradamus illustrated the supposed doomsday manifesto, since no evidence exists that he was capable of drawing or inclined to do so. But for many, the images hint that one and only one artist was responsible for its creation. When looking at this body of images, the rendering, the drawing, was probably done through one hand because there's a continuity and a consistency in the way they've been drawn and the way they've been hand-colored. There's not a lot of diversity there. Could the lone artist be Cesar, the eldest son of Nostradamus? As a boy, Cesar inherited his father's astrolabe, used for determining the position of celestial bodies. But did Cesar inherit something far greater? The gift of prophecy. Or could he have learned enough of the mystical arts from his father to experience his own dark visions of the future? Then record them visually in the lost book. Now it is interesting that Cesar would have been in a great position to have learned all sorts of metaphysical knowledge from his father, but how exactly he may have capitalized upon that, I don't know. Some believe that Cesar indeed had prophetic abilities and expressed them using his chosen profession. As an adult, he worked as a painter. He became an accomplished portrait artist. I think he made most of his living by that. Many years after the death of his father, Cesar painted a likeness of the revered prophet. A son's effort, perhaps, to explore the enigma of his haunted father. You look at his portraits that his son made of him and his lips are straight across and thin, like a man who has spent his life kind of keeping his secrets to himself. Even the musculature of his mouth, you can see that he was taciturn, he had a taciturn face. And those big, gray, penetrating eyes kept a lot of secrets. Another intriguing example of Cesar's artistry is his self-portrait. To some, it expresses his individuality but also a desire to fashion himself in his father's image. He asserts himself through these different allegorical images of his various pursuits that are in the corners of the image, like painting and poetry. So it's kind of a self-portrait in which he models himself on his father, in a sense. But Cesar's skill as a painter isn't the only clue that he may have illustrated the lost book. He was also an historian who understood the symbology used throughout the manuscript. Symbols of ancient alchemy, Islam, medieval Christianity, and astrology. I'm an art historian and I look at thousands and thousands of works of art. And I know a lot about symbolism. But I never have seen a body of work that is so inclusive of so many symbols from so many different cultures and so many different times. There's a growing interest in the 16th century in these kinds of images that don't represent anything directly but have these kind of symbolic relationship to various esoteric ideas. And so for that very reason, it seems plausible that he could have painted them. But even if Cesar did draw the cryptic images in the lost book, this does not prove these images are intended to be prophetic and that they accurately predict future events. More information about Cesar is needed to evaluate his abilities as a prophet. The rudimentary nature of the images may provide answers. Is it possible Cesar wanted to conceal his true identity as the artist? Some believe he might have been utilizing a trick similar to one used by his father. The senior Nostradamus disguised his prophecies as riddles to avoid accusations of heresy by the most powerful institution of the 16th century. The church. That's how powerful the church was at that time. If there was even a hint in the quatrains that had anything to do with the church or with the future, they would have killed him. So this is why he made them so mysterious and used all of the tricks that he did when he wrote them. Are the lost books cryptic images, Cesar's visual equivalent of his father's literary sleight of hand? If so, are his apocalyptic predictions an accurate forecast of our future? 
Some accept the book's prophetic accuracy because they believe it precisely foresaw events that did come to pass and continue to unfold today. Image 38 pictures a figure of a pope doing battle with a bear, a symbol for Russia used since the 19th century. What I think is interesting about this image is the fact of how the pope and the bear are holding each other at bay. It's a very clever, symbolic reference to the Cold War between the West and the Russians. To many who consider the lost book an accurate chronicle of prophecy, Cesar is not a viable candidate as its author. Their key piece of evidence? The words of Nostradamus. In his preface to his book, The Prophecies, in 1555, he wrote a telling passage to Cesar. For the hereditary word of predictions shall be locked up in my breast. Nostradamus made it absolutely clear, no obscurity at all, that the gift that he had to see the future would die with him. None of his children would have it. If Cesar lacked the gift of prophecy attributed to his father, could it still be possible he authored the lost book? Perhaps in an effort to prove his father wrong? You could say that Cesar might have wanted to do that in his own light. Well, my father said that, but that's not what he really meant, that this gift would end with him, because I feel like I got the gift. So I'm going to make my stabs and my tries at making this happen. But some suggest other possibilities. What if Cesar was not a prophet, yet still authored the lost book under his father's name? Could his motivation have been less noble than to warn future generations of a coming apocalypse. The chilling prophecy said to be hidden in this cryptic book bearing the name of Nostradamus beckons to the 21st century. If we accept its authenticity, the countdown to Armageddon has already begun. Skeptics dismiss this possibility. But others accept that the world may soon spiral downward into unprecedented destruction. Of the seven key images said to convey the prophecy, the fourth is believed to signal the instant when humanity will find itself perched on the precipice of annihilation. It pictures a female threatened by a blindfolded archer. We could think of the uh, fourth in the series as moving us much closer to our present time period. Now, traditionally, the mystical center of the galaxy was thought of as Isis, as the great cosmic mother, as the womb of the great mother. So the sense of the first two figures seems to be that something very dangerous is about to erupt. It's a feeling of impending doom. Some believe that the prophecy contained in the lost book is a reliable forecast of an imminent apocalypse. In the book's body of imagery, they see spiritual insight. In its sweeping array of symbolism, they see a methodical understanding of the cosmos. In the consistency of the illustrator's technique, they see one gifted prophet warning generations beyond his time of the end of days. Regardless who the author or authors and illustrators were of the lost book, the fact remains that whoever was behind it did have a lot of mystical knowledge. In this image of a cleric and king menaced by a blade, some see a reference to a guillotine and the bloodlust of the French Revolution. Now it's a rather odd image because it shows a hand and two heads on pillars or pedestals. And this would sort of be an indication of their authority, their elevated quality above the norm. Perhaps that's the king and queen of France. It is somehow God's judgment coming to cut off the heads of king and queen from the French Revolution. The argument exists that Cesar, the son of Nostradamus, illustrated this cryptic image and all the others in the lost book. But is it possible he did so even if he had no prophetic abilities? Did Cesar draw the prophecies in the lost book trying to live up to or even surpass 
his father's legacy. Cesar Nostradamus loved his father, but he also seemed to have this need to emulate his father in many ways, to not only broaden the grandeur of his father's memory, but also his own baskin in the sun of that. But what if Cesar held no delusions of being a prophet? The name on the lost book is the elder Nostradamus, not Cesar. Some believe it is possible Cesar fabricated the book, not to enhance his own legacy, but his father's. He adored the memory of his father and, dare I say it, mythologized it a bit. I mean, he added a few little things and thought up a few things because he wanted to keep his father's myth going. He was, of course, his father's best PR agent after Nostradamus' secretary, Jean Ami Chevigny. So he was very concerned with preserving his father's legend. He was very concerned with making sure the properties kept being reprinted and the money kept coming in. If Cesar did fabricate the book, some followers of Nostradamus wonder whether he had a more sinister motivation. Greed. Could the cryptic illustrations be a son's clever effort to cash in on his father's name? According to my research, Nostradamus' son, Cesar, was kind of known to be a charlatan. I think that after his father passed away, he tried to make a little bit of extra money doing this and that, pertaining to his father and his father's activities. Was the lost book an angry son's cynical revenge against his father? The father that had publicly announced that Cesar had no prophetic power. If you're a trickster, if you're a con artist, this is the kind of flim-flam that you would do. And there were a lot of people doing this even in Nostradamus' time. But if Cesar did fabricate the lost book as an emotionally scarred son feeling shunned by his father, an ironic possibility exists. Perhaps the senior Nostradamus deliberately concealed his son's prophetic gifts in order to protect him from those who persecuted purveyors of the dark arts. Whatever the truth, if Cesar fabricated the lost book, its credibility as the ultimate doomsday playbook is lost. But some doubt that Cesar was capable of such an elaborate hoax. A forgery like the lost book would on many levels have been completely beyond him. It's also possible that Chavigny, the secretary Nostradamus employed to transcribe his prophecies, is the real author. He had access to Nostradamus's library and his writings. Chavigny, his secretary, and his son, Cesar, also have this mix of, of trying to burn a little of their own light and be less a shadow in the sun of Nostradamus. Chavigny wrote the first biography of Nostradamus and published an interpretation of some of the quatrains. But no clues point to Chavigny as the author of the lost book. Is there a surprising new candidate that would redefine our understanding of the cryptic images? Perhaps a closer evaluation of the lost book will yield new clues. An unexpected twist might prove its puzzling images really are an authentic prophecy of mankind's impending doom. A strange book, hundreds of years old, rediscovered in 1994. Cryptic images said to hold the secret to humanity's future. And the mother of all prophecies. The world will perish in a final apocalypse. But how and when? The only clues researchers have to decode this prophecy supposedly lie in the book itself and the seven key images believed to point the way to Armageddon. The sixth of the seven, according to some, speaks of our generation's future. In this one we see a scientist or a learned man studying the Book of Life. We see a veil being dropped across the time period. The literal meaning of the Greek word apocalypse is simply lifting the veil. So this is pointing to the fact that we are in the time of apocalypse, but apocalypse is when all the secrets are going to be revealed, when all the mystery is revealed. 
Will this ominous vision of the future come to pass? Some believe it will. Convinced that the book has a proven track record of prophecies that have already come true. In fact, seven decades before the lost book resurfaced, a group of researchers used its prophetic power for political gain. One of these researchers happened to be a friend and supporter of Benito Mussolini. So Mussolini became aware of it as early as 1923, when the original discoverer, quote unquote, wrote a massive series of articles for the Italian press about how these images in particular predicted the time period in which the fascists, the brown shirts, etc., would rise to power, they would control the Pope, and they would bring on a new Rome. A deeper understanding of the lost book's prophecies may be gained by revisiting the book's journey to the Vatican in the 17th century. Some believe that in 1629, and near the end of his life, an aging Cesar Nostradamus agonized over how to preserve its message for future generations. He is said to have braved his way across plague-ridden France to deliver the book to Cardinal Maffeo Barberini. Barberini was destined to become Pope and be the last Pope to expand the church's territory by force of arms. Barberini would have been very interested in this sort of work because it could suggest, and does in some interpretations, that uh, Barberini was about to become a pope. So at the time period that we know it passed into Barberini's hands, say 1628, 1629, it would have been of tremendous interest to the man who's going to be Pope Urban VIII. No one knows why Cesar entrusted the book to Barberini and there is no record of Barberini's or the Vatican's opinion of it. All that is certain is that Cesar died shortly afterward in 1629, and that the book and its secrets apparently remained concealed for centuries. Did church authorities purposely hide the book? Did they object to its sinister expression of the dark arts? Did they see in its cryptic images a threat to the church? The whole subtext of the collection is anti-Rome, and we must destroy the authority, if not the person, of the Pope. This one shows the Pope taking on the authority of Jesus. The Pope is essentially evil, and that's why we see the serpent coiled around the tree in the image that Redeemer, if it's the Pope, will really be evil. It will really be the Antichrist. There are images of people being slaughtered. There's images of the Pope being cast out of Rome. Were church officials troubled most by the book's definitive prophecy, specifying the time of the end of days? At a time when the church wielded tremendous influence, such a prophecy would have been considered blasphemy presuming knowledge of a cosmic event known only to God. But the church may have recognized one more threat in the book's imagery, one that could finally solve the mystery of the book's authorship. For some, the drawings bear the spiritual signature of a group of Christian heretics who predated Nostradamus and Caesar by more than 300 years, the Cathars. They didn't believe exactly the way the church did. And in fact, some of these people believe that Jesus was a spirit, uh, that he was married to Mary Magdalene, for instance. And part of this larger tradition was that we know, and the Roman church doesn't, exactly when the world's gonna end. Some interpreters believe the apocalyptic images of the lost book may be the work of the Cathars. One of the Cathars' key beliefs was that spirit alone was pure and the physical world was evil. They therefore perceived the Pope, the church's ruler of that physical world, as evil incarnate. Was the lost book in Nostradamus's own library a reference book known as the Vaticinia? A pictorial guide he consulted when working on his prophetic visions? 
the Vaticini attributed to Nostradamus date from the late 13th, early 14th century, 200 years before Nostradamus was even born. So it's clear that Nostradamus wasn't creating these images out of his own prophetic ability. And considering how bad his handwriting and his ability to draw simple symbols would have been, it's almost impossible to conceive that he would have been making a copy of a Vaticinia that he had seen. If the Cathars authored the lost book, followers of the prophecy gain an intriguing new perspective on the specifics of the apocalypse they foresaw. The Cathars believed in an ancient Christian doctrine called Kiliasm. This doctrine taught that after seven years of cataclysm, Jesus would return to earth to reign in peace for a thousand years. Kiliasm is a second century heresy that believed that when Jesus returned, not only would there be a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem, but that we would get new bodies, there would be no such thing as sin, everything would be one long party, and we'd party for a millennium. But what of the horrors that precede Christ's return, which many are still awaiting? If the end of days is upon us, will the seven cryptic images of the lost book reveal a timetable for our demise? And if the Cathars are the book's authors, what surprising force of evil did they predict would orchestrate the end of everything? This book, Lost for Centuries, is said to predict horror on an unimaginable scale. A cataclysm destined to strike in our own lifetime. Some have long considered the book to be the work of the famed prophet Nostradamus. Now, evidence casts serious doubt on that assumption. But does this mean the prophetic power of the book should be dismissed? Or are the illustrations, as some believe, further evidence that doomsday prophecies of the past may be converging with current events? After careful scrutiny, Researchers now believe the images of the lost book may have originated with the long-forgotten medieval Christian cult known as the Cathars. Knowing more about this mystifying religious sect may be the key to unlocking the apocalyptic prophecy within the lost book. When comparing the illustrations of the lost book to those derived from the Cathars, the similarities are striking. This image represents the Catharist belief in a teacher of righteousness. Someone who, in our modern sort of Star Wars parlance, would bring balance to the Force. He would be the great teacher of Catharism that would point out the mistakes of the Catholic Church and bring a simpler, truer, more feminine-based Christianity to the forefront. Images like this extend from the Cathars' belief that the Pope was not holy, but evil. How does this shape their vision of the Apocalypse? Will the answer reveal itself, as some suggest, in our lifetime? Against a larger backdrop of global conflict? A titanic war between the forces of two world religions? A possible clue may lie in this drawing. One of the most important images is the image with the serpent that has a crescent moon around its mouth, the crescent moon being a symbolic reference to, to Islam. As fate will have it in the future, there seems to be a, a great clash between Christianity and Islam. Could today's rising tide of terrorism and wars in the Middle East be signs that this great religious conflict has already begun? Some interpreters believe that as this holy war escalates, two great figures will do battle on a global stage. The Pope, God's supreme authority according to the Catholic Church, and Satan's emissary on earth, the Antichrist. Interpreters of Nostradamus point to this quatrain as evidence of the Antichrist's existence, in which they suggest the seer may have actually named him. Mavis will soon die. Then will come a horrible undoing of people and animals. Scholars debate whether Mavis is a literal name or a coded reference. 
But could the phrase, will soon die, then will come, mean that the Antichrist will appear to be killed, then be resurrected? Is this his ploy to claim divine powers and gain a world of followers? Although Nostradamus leaves the identity of the Antichrist a mystery, the lost book's images leave little doubt. If the Cathars truly were the book's authors, this is where their radical portrayal of the Pope reaches its culmination. They see the Pope not as the heroic nemesis of the Antichrist, but possibly as the Antichrist himself. The connection between the papacy and the end of the world is the important point. Some researchers see great significance in this connection between the prophecies of the Cathars and Nostradamus. Both emphasize that the Antichrist, regardless of his identity, is the key figure bringing about the end of days. As the world spirals into chaos, the Antichrist will intensify the turmoil. Some believe the seventh and final of the Lost Book's key images may point to the exact moment of the final cataclysm. In this image, we see that the veil has been completely dropped, that all the mysteries have been revealed. But the revelation of these cosmic mysteries doesn't seem to help humanity. Because at the center of this image, we find a raving wild man holding up a completely blank book. The book of life is over. The book of time is over. The book of wisdom is over. If this image does suggest the time of the apocalypse, the question looms, how soon? Does the lost book specify precisely when this spiral into chaos will begin? This drawing may illustrate a galactic alignment that reveals the exact year when this cosmic event will occur. Experts interpret the Scorpion to represent the constellation of Scorpio. And between its claws, they see an image of our spiral galaxy. Now, this is really important because in the 14th century, we didn't have telescopes. The fact that we were a galaxy and that we had a central spiral core wasn't discovered by modern science until 1917. But someone clearly back in the 14th century knew that this alignment, when some key moment in time fell between Sagittarius's arrow and Scorpio's stinger, it's a very critical moment. The winter solstice sun rises right under the foot of St. Michael in between Scorpio and Sagittarius. That event, the galactic alignment, some people call it, has been taking place regularly every winter solstice since about 1996. It will be most exact and then begin to move away December 21st, 2012, which just coincidentally happens to be the ending point of the Mayan calendar. 2012. A year said to be specified in other doomsday prophecies. A year expected to witness an unusually high degree of solar radiation that could magnify the chaos on Earth. According to a number of studies, this next solar climax will be far more powerful than any that's been recorded. A planet devastated by the effects of solar radiation. A world torn apart by a war between religions. How likely is any of this? Skeptics consider it unrealistic. Others say it is all forecast in the lost book. Despite the evidence that the book may be the work of the Cathars, some believe the key figure in its mysterious history is Cesar Nostradamus. They remain open to the possibility that he is the book's author. But they reason that even if Cesar is not, he and his illustrious father could have made it their mission to preserve the book's prophecy for the generation destined to witness it. I think whenever you look at Nostradamus, he was there to warn the world. He believed that his prophecies were warnings and that something could be done about them. I think people want to be comforted and Nostradamus appears to offer some sort of certainty. Whether the prophecies of Nostradamus and others offer any certainty is a matter of opinion. But if doomsday prophecies and the events surrounding us are truly converging, 
the storm may well be on the horizon.